Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. These are our news for Sherry Camp and surrounding areas from February 7th to the 14th, 2021. On today's segment, highlights from this month's council meeting. Also, La Société Saint-Pierre asked the community for name suggestions for a new campground and performance center in Trout Brook, a place of historical significance for the Acadian community. But first, a public hearing coming this Thursday about a contentious zoning question in Shetty Camp. Municipal Council will be holding a public consultation on Thursday, February 18th about the proposal to ban new campgrounds from residential zones in Shetty Camp only. This will be an interim measure while staff works on developing a new commercial zone for campgrounds. The question comes after Point Cross residents complain about a campground project large enough to accommodate over 100 RVs being built near their homes. Defenders of the project argued it will bring economic development to the community. The Eastern District Planning Commission is putting forward the recommendation following a public consultation back in October. The ban on new campgrounds in the RR1 zone will be a temporary measure while staff reviews other zoning possibilities for commercial projects. But this is not going to be discussed at the February 18th meeting. When that recommendation comes forward, there's going to be another public consultation. Because of recently relaxed COVID restrictions, residents will be able to attend the meeting in person at the Club de Retraité on 15108 Cabo Trail at 1 p.m. Municipal Council will be there too. The meeting will be held over Zoom as well, so people will have the choice to participate virtually. Anyone wishing to make an oral presentation has to sign up by calling 902-787-3501. You can get the Zoom link by calling that number. Written submissions can be sent to jdbain at edpc.ca. You can read a copy of what is being proposed at edpca-staffreports.htm. At the latest council meeting, Inverness County's Municipal Council agreed to oversee that its dog control bylaw be registered with the province so it can be enforced. At the moment, the only way the municipality can deal with dog complaints is to ask owners to change their behavior, but it can take no legal action like tickets. It will actually be the first bylaw the municipality will register with the province. It hasn't been really an issue. I mean, there's all kinds of bylaws, um, but up to this point, we basically, you know, speak to the people involved and, and work it out that way. Um, and we don't have to go to this means to solve the issue usually. But um, should that happen, we want to be prepared for it. So we haven't had any issues um, that I can think of since my time here that has created that type of a problem. We've been able to negotiate um, using the, the wording of the bylaw to say, you know, this can't happen this way because of this bylaw. And uh, we haven't had to take legal action on it, but um, it's something that just needed to be cleaned up, I think, and, and dealt with, and it hadn't been in the past. So I guess that's my role now as warden is seeing that, and council is seeing that this is taken care of. So in the future, we can, uh, we can utilize our bylaws even in a more effective way. For those who are wondering, land use bylaws are enforced by the Eastern District Planning Commission. At the February meeting, Council also approved new expense, remuneration and hospitality policy. Changes made to the expense policy have to do with a $200 honorarium available to citizens who join municipal boards and committees. The honorarium has been rarely used in the last few years. Council decided to raise awareness about it, so more citizens claim it. Remuneration policy amendments have to do with an office rental allowance for councillors. The municipality offers a monthly $250 contribution to nonprofit organizations providing office space to councillors. District 1's Alfred Poirier recently moved his office to Le Trois Pignons in Shetty Camp to make use of the new amendment. Hospitality policy has to do with giving councillors an allowance to cover the cost of a meal if they're hosting someone for a working lunch, for example. The Société Saint-Pierre is asking the community to send them ideas for names for a new campground and performance center being built by Parks Canada at Trout Brook. There's also going to be trails and cabins in need of naming, so the organization wants several suggestions. The areas of historical significance for the Acadian community. Dans les années 1864 jusqu'à la construction du parc en 1936 et quelques années après, il y avait une communauté vibrante qui vivaient à l'intérieur des terres du Parc national des hautes terres. Puis, euh, on parle du Cap Rouge souvent, mais ce n'était pas juste le Cap Rouge, on parlait de la Rigouèche, la Bloc, le Ruisseau des Maurices, 
la rivière Lazare, le Butreau, la Presqu'île, c'était tous des noms de petites régions à l'intérieur du parc où on vivait nos Acadiens. Puis, il euh, faut dire quand même quand on parle de toutes ces communautés, on revient souvent au nom Cap Rouge. Quand on parle du Cap Rouge, on, on englobe tous nos Acadiens qui vivaient dans les terres, du, dans la, la construction du parc national. Et pour nous, c'est très, très important comme société historique. Euh, la société Saint-Pierre a été impliquée dans le projet depuis ses débuts pour euh, non seulement la construction d'un terrain de camping, mais quand on parlait de donner des noms, on voulait ramener les noms acadiens sur l'affichage. On voulait des plaques d'interprétation. Par exemple, aujourd'hui, si on marche le sentier du Butreau, il y a des enseignes et, proches des faux d'anciens, qu'on peut identifier les familles qui y vivaient dans les années. Alors, c'est des différentes choses que la société Saint-Pierre a fait pendant les années. Puis, plus récemment, on, récemment, on a travaillé sur un projet de recherche sur nos Acadiens à, au Parc national. Puis, de la recherche, il y a eu le, le, le livre du Cap Rouge qu'on a publié en 2019. Euh, puis ça, c'est un peu pour nous assurer que les générations à venir auront accès à de l'information pertinente sur leurs ancêtres, et même si ce pas leurs ancêtres, les Acadiens qui vivaient à l'intérieur du parc. Alors, c'est un projet qui nous amène aujourd'hui au terrain de camping. Those are our news for the week. If you have any stories you'd like to share, you can write to us at cateny.television at gmail.com. We we'll leave you with a view of the Cape Breton Highlands covering snow this weekend. Thanks for watching.